hello everyone again and welcome to this particular video and in here we're going to be continuing from where we stopped involving cross coupling and in that particular video our previous video we looked at how cross coupling is really crucial in bringing two R groups together to form a new sigma bond and how this is crucial as well in a specific type of mechanism step that involves transmetallation and take note that in that particular step we actually form two palladium carbon bonds and those two palladium carbon bonds will then be used by reductive elimination without i would say a base to create a new compound that is actually our i would say major product so in this particular video we're going to look at a specific i would say nobel particular step or um, method used to create a specific organic compounds that involves compounds that has alkenes and this particular mechanism is actually done with the help of a type of coupling called the sterile coupling and sterile coupling is actually was done i would say before his death and then later on in 2010 Suzuki was awarded the Nobel Prize because of how he actually followed up with Stubbs coupling and in this particular type of coupling which is a cross coupling we are going to look at the key terms to actually be aware of in here and our goal in this particular method is to recognize the organometallics that is involved in the stealth coupling and then we're going to focus on key components and mechanism in stealth coupling and then connect the carbonation carbonylation i'll put it to stealth coupling in two ways so in here we're going to recognize the organometallic that is actually involved in the stealth coupling and this stealth coupling was discovered in the early i'll say summaries and the importance of this particular coupling was that you are going to use this coupling to bring two compounds which are our groups together either this aromatic compound here which is attached of course to a triphylate which is creating this organohalide and this is going to be done in the presence of a specific type of a vanillic system that's attached to a specific form of metallic here which is called a selenate and the selenine is actually going to be present presented in the presence of a uh, palladium catalyst which is around five more percent and this is going to be done in that solvent system so take note that the product that is going to be formed is the alkene looking at those two alkene regions and then you're connecting the two carbons to form a sigma bond so therefore this actually leads to 70 percent yield and this is involving an organometallic which is called a stanil and this stanil is actually an R group which is attached to a metal which is the, in this case a tin hydride so in this case we're going to look at the key mechanism that is focusing on the stealth coupling and the stealth coupling first off begins with palladium which is a catalyst we're going to start off first with the four ligands attached to it and by i'll say ligand exchange and after that due to oxidative addition we actually lose two ligands and then giving the accommodation for uh, oxidative addition with a specific organohalide in this case we're going to make our x to be either chlorine or triphylate and in this case here due to this process we are able to form our palladium 2 from palladium 0 so therefore our palladium is going to be forming the complex with our organohalide and this actually you notice is the first palladium carbon sigma bond that is created now the next step which is a transmetallation which is a slow step is going to be done when our organometallic comes in contact in here with a specific complex therefore this leads to the breaking of our bond with the metal region thereby forming a sigma bond with the palladium 
in connection to the sp2 carbon right there and therefore this creates a good living group to actually form a specific ionic compound therefore this leads to what you observe to the formation of the second palladium carbon sigma bond that is created so therefore as a result of this due to reductive elimination which is a really fast step we actually have the formation of first in here we have our living group coming in contact now with the palladium thereby causing this particular bond to cleave and forms a fresh new sigma carbon carbon bond therefore causing our palladium to actually go back to its original oxidation state to continue that cycle while our product is actually forming a new sigma bond which is the red between the alkene and the aromatic alkene region right there so therefore this is actually the product that is created and you need to take note and be aware please of the three step process because that is the point the oxidative addition is done to actually increase the oxidation number of palladium to get it active and going thereby introducing organic halide and then the next step by transmetallation which is a slow step we introduce the second palladium carbon sigma bond that is going to be then used with the help of a reductive elimination when our living group comes back and causes the formation of our new sigma carbon carbon bond between our first R group and our second R group so this take note is going to be important in here and take note that this particular sterling reaction here is actually used to make bonds between sp2 carbon atoms take note of that take note of that that is really important if you have two carbons that are sp2 hybridized you are forming a sigma bond that is actually a stealth reaction so in this case now is this possible to do it for an sp carbon yes of course you can do that as well if you have a reactant in here and you notice that this is just one reactant but then there is a region or two regions where there is an active site not this particular triple bond here but looking at this region here where we have our triphylate which is creating a form of an organohalide and on the end region we have a form of organometallic which has this tannin and this actually leads us to come to the conclusion that there's going to be a closing of the ring in here with the presence of our catalyst which is palladium and our catalyst here will be used to bring those two ends together to form a fresh new sigma bond that you see right there and this actually is 46 percent in yield quite a big compound of course due to restrictions here and there things might actually limit the yield of this particular big compound thereby you saying that this is actually having a 10 membered ring with two alkene alkynes so this question here comes into play what is the mechanism the big question now comes to you in the comment section type yes if you want to see the mechanism by that way on our future videos i'll highlight the mechanism for you guys that are interested and watch out for that by subscribing as well so moving on in here to the other part which is stealth coupling with connection to the carbonylation there is actually two ways to accomplish that one way is by using our uh, acid chloride and this acid chloride is going to be used as a substrate and we see the chloride to be a little bit of a form of organohalide and this will be done in the presence of this particular stannyl compound which is our organometallic here so therefore in the presence of our palladium chloride with phosphine attached to it and in the presence of carbon monoxide as a gas this carbon monoxide goal is to prevent any form of decarbonylation and this will be done 
after oxidative addition is done. So therefore, in this particular process, this actually leads to the formation of, uh, don't forget, we have one segment that has uh, our group and then we're going to form a sigma bond that is actually connected to our uh, other region of that ring. Therefore, we see the formation of our product that is generated right there. And don't forget here that there is actually one way of accomplishing this particular formation of our product. Take note here that there is a double bond in that particular blue ring which I kind of missed out on. So please don't forget to put the double bond in that blue particular triangle, I would say, or two-sided, um, I would say, hook right there. So there's a double bond in one of the carbons. So take note of that. So the second one here is actually focusing on the second step, which we're going to show the mechanism on. And this involves the presence of a lot of, I would say, carbon monoxide. And in the presence of carbon monoxide, and in here, one of create a carbonylation this actually when you have your two reagents and uh, we have our organohalide and we have our organometallic and this is done in the presence of palladium with phosphine and take note here that this will be done in the presence of one atmosphere pressure of carbon monoxide this actually has to be done in a saturated solution of that and this is the solvent system and so therefore this leads to the formation of our particular product here which is a form of a ketone alkene with an ester ether sorry right there so this sub product here has 80 percent yield or produces 80 percent yield this is actually going to be created but not this particular form which doesn't have a specific carbonyl region right there so therefore how can we accomplish the 80 percent yield through that particular mechanism and not that particular one that is not formed so to accomplish this we have to look at the mechanism on how this particular 80 percent yield is actually created and so in order for we to accomplish that we start off with palladium 2 well, zero to go into palladium 2 through the process process of oxidative addition where we have our organo halide and this organo halide then completes our oxidative addition process and therefore this actually leads to the formation of our complex that has palladium 2 created from palladium 0 and then the next step is by legged exchange we actually have a carbon monoxide which don't forget at one atmosphere we're having a saturated carbon monoxide solution this actually comes in and creates a form of legged exchange which is i would say is a form of an sn2 reaction that creates the ligand to become a good living group and therefore this actually leads to the formation of our new complex where we now have two palladium carbon bonds already established in here so once you recognize that we have two palladium carbon bonds don't forget that two palladium carbon bonds then this actually will lead to a form of a carbonylation where in this case the carbonylation happens when we have the ligand that left coming back and then bonding to the palladium therefore causing the palladium carbon aromatic ring region to break off to form a carbon carbon bond with that particular carbon monoxide therefore this particular triple bond loses one of its pi to form a lone pair with the oxygen therefore this leads us to the formation of our palladium which has one palladium carbon bond but this carbon is actually a carbonyl therefore this actually it leads to the formation of palladium 2 a cell complex therefore by transmetallation we actually use our second reactant which is called the organohalide or organostanin and this organostanin comes in and creates a new palladium carbon bond which then causes our iodide to leave and therefore 
forming a specific organic or uh, ionic compound and then releases a specific complex that has the two carbon palladium bonds established and ready to go for the formation of our main products during the process of reductive elimination therefore this actually leads to the formation of our product which is product a and therefore this makes us to regenerate our specific catalyst that will be involved in the next cycle therefore this is actually the key steps that are required in here for the I would say coexistence of transmetallation, which is a key component in our cross coupling in cells reaction to that of carbonylation, which involves the introducing of a carbonyl to our specific to our group region. So that's about it for this particular video. Quite a long video. Hope you're able to understand this connection between the cells reaction and also how that is applicable to a uh, specific carbonylation where we have two forms one is either using the acid chloride or the other method is by using a high concentration of carbon monoxide so that's about it for this particular video hope you're able to understand this please hit the comment down below let me hear your thoughts don't forget to subscribe by that way i can talk to you later stay smart and always believe in yourselves